All right, quick audio test, one, two, three. Excellent. Ready to go live. Are we live? No? Yes? <laughs> I think the stream's just randomly gone live on its own. Are we live? Everyone give me a thumbs up if we're live. Sound two, excellent. Everything coming together. I honestly didn't even press the button to go live, so. <laughs> it's just happened. Excellent, cool. Excellent, well, I don't know what to say now. I'm all a bit surprised. I mean, not totally surprised. There was some planning that went into this. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back to another live stream where, if it isn't obvious already, we are going to be continuing the build of the Caribou Mark III S. As you can see, we've got quite a bit done already in the previous stream, so there are links below if you want to see, if you want to look about that, look about, read about, watch, yeah. There's links below if you want to see the previous builds. But we're going to be carrying on today, so all the instructions and stuff will be on screen if you want to check them out. Also, there's a link to Caribou in the description below. I must, of course, give a massive thank you to Martin for letting me use his printer. So this is not mine. This belongs to one of my subscribers who was uh, fortunate, not fortunate enough, I was fortunate enough that he was willing to send it to me so I can do this live stream for you. So big thank you to him. Now, I think we ought to get on with it. We've got 3D Gusner and Wolfgang in the chat. So 3D Gusner's done all the firmware for this and Wolfgang uh, owns Caribou 3D. So if you have questions about the machine, then there's two people there that hopefully will be able to help you. So thank you very much to them for attending. Right. Cool. Good evening, everyone, and hello, everyone in the chat. Let's get going straight away. Let's not delay at all. Switch over to our normal live stream looking setup, where we've got instructions on the top right and then loads of camera angles. So hopefully I don't have to move the cameras around too much and you'll always be able to see what's going on. <laughs> this is always the challenge with doing a live build is that Obviously, everything only happens once, and I need to make sure that you can all see what's going on. But I also don't want to spend the entire stream just moving cameras around, because that just gets a little bit silly. So, obviously, today we're going to be starting off with the IMZ box assembly. So, this is the standard instruction manual. It comes with all the pictures and parts that you uh, need to use. Very much the same as we've been doing in the previous streams. As I mentioned in the description as well, I have done some preparation. So where like hex nuts and stuff need to be inserted, I have already done that just to make sure we don't spend 20 minutes inserting hex nuts. So we can get on with the actual main assembly. So square nuts, hex nuts, all sorts of that. Pretty sure all of those that I need are already inserted. Hopefully I've not missed any. So we can get pretty much straight on with it. Oh, also, if you wanted to see stuff about the tools I'm using, there are there's a link to my website where you can check out all the kind of tools I use. And there are affiliate links, which I get a small kickback from. It doesn't cost you anything additional, but does give me a kickback from, well, it gives me a small percentage of your purchase. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> Free for you, but helpful for me. If you want to purchase, of course, you don't have to, that's totally optional. Uh, so I did have a fiddle with this actually before the assembly. This is quite a difficult thing to put on, but I've already figured out a way so I can make it look really easy. <laughs> so 
This should just go in here. Oh, yes. Thank you, Gasna. There we go. <laughs> I always forget to start the timer. It's going to be totally redundant me having that timer in the long run because every time I use it, I'm just going to forget to turn it on. <laughs> I did see new Einzi box. Uh, I think there was a publish uh, post on Twitter about it. Yes, obviously this is the, uh, I, well, I guess now you could say it's the old design, but I mean, it's still presumably a totally functional design, so I'm not too worried about that. Uh, inserting those, tighten screws gently. Insert the IZ Rambo board into the INZ box, aligned with the four holes on the back. So it looks like a slightly different approach to what Prusa uses. Not only is the enclosure much larger, which will give us lots more space to work with in terms of tidy and easy to use cable management, but it will also mean, it doesn't actually, yes, that will be that way up. But it's also facing outwards instead of inwards, which was always kind of confusing with the Prusa design. So yeah, hopefully we'll end up a little bit easier to work with overall. Eight minutes per stream, yeah. Oh dear. I almost need it to like automatically start. It might end up just totally redundant. I'll end up just using the time of the timer of the bar on the bottom of the stream. But for everyone that's not really aware of why this is here, this timer is basically how long we've been building for so far. Plus approximately eight minutes per stream because I always forget to turn it off. Um, what screws do we need? Four M three by eight. So you can see I've got this nice little diagram. All the screws do come in little labeled baggies or bags. <laughs> uh, but for purposes of being organized, I felt it was useful. Let's just get all of these hex keys out. I don't think I need the big ones anymore. Yeah, so for the purposes of the stream, I got them all out and put them in this nice little organizer box, apart from like less common ones, which are stacked in here. So I reach for those when I need them. There is quite a lot of plastic parts. Personally, I don't think that's a massive issue. This seems like a longer screw than it's needed. I think it might have fallen into the wrong compartment. I think that's a 10 mil screw. It is, silly me. Yep, it's got lost that one. Oh no, only two more, that's fine. Uh, yes, yeah, so there are, well, there are quite a lot of plastic components. It's worth bearing in mind that they are actually uh, printed a little more dense than the Prusa ones. So the Prusa's standard, I think, is two perimeters and like a 10% infill or something like that. I don't know exactly, but they, they do feel quite light, whereas these ones, you can feel are like really solid. They're, they're dense parts. So while well, it does use printed parts, all this structural stuff is quite often uh, metallic and the printed parts themselves are quite rigidly printed. So at the end of the day, if it works, it works. Of course, we don't want to do these too tight, but we do want to do them tight enough that they're not going to come loose. So that should be pretty good. Four perimeters, five top and bottom layers, 35% infill. 
Yeah, so <laughs> it's quite a lot. 1.1 kilos. Is that per printer? Wow. Blimey. I guess there are some quite big printed parts as well, like the whole spool holder, so. That obviously adds up. And then you've got all the, uh, the tooling parts. I don't know if you included those in that 1.1 kilos. Anyway, uh, next stage, uh, PSU assembly. Okay, I guess we're not gonna put the cover on yet. Obviously, as, uh, there's no wires in here yet. Power supply. Looks like the power supply does come assembled now. Wolfgang, could you clarify that this is exactly how everyone else will get it? Obviously, the instructions suggest assembly, but what I've got here is a fully assembled power supply. So my assumption being that this will be the standard for your kits now. Don't forget, it is a tank. <laughs> it is, absolutely. 100 hours of printing per printer. It's a lot, isn't it? Yes, so the, yeah, that's clarification. Every power supply is assembled. So, no need to worry about the actual power supply assembly of this whole unit, just of itself to the machine. That is just super rigid. So we don't need to do any of this. Don't need to do this, don't need to do this, don't need to do this, or this, or this, or that, or that. And then this is a different type of power supply, which we don't have. And then we installed it. Also, this is becoming remarkably heavy. <laughs> the, uh, the 10 mil steel rods and everything just really adds up in what I didn't realize I kind of forget like week to week how, how much heavier it's gotten. Oh, have I put this in the, oh, I've put it in the wrong place. This this T-slot nut looks like it's supposed to go in the side face for this, but I've put it in the wrong one. I've put it in the back, ah. Oh. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> oh no! I made a mistake. Yeah. So, the when I was following the instructions, I don't know if it was me following it incorrectly or mistaking the instructions, but I've put a slot nut. I've got a nut in this carriage, whereas the hole is here. So we might have to do a little bit of, oh, no. This is going to be a significant pain, I think. Yeah, okay. So we're going to have to do some disassembly now, which is unfortunate. That is my plan. Just a quick loosen and we should be there. It shouldn't be too bad actually. Also, I've only got one slot nut in the top. It looks like I would need two. There's two spare at this point. Does this, no, this does only use one. Okay. So we need to hopefully, oh, we've got to do these two as well.
should, yeah, so that now slides to the side very carefully. You can pull this up out the top and drop that down into there. Slide this back across. square out quickly just to make sure we assemble it back square again Doku, let's tighten these top ones too. Good to see you're here, Martin. I wondered if you were for a minute. I was like, has he not got the notification? Does he not know that there's another stream? Yeah, looks like it's just going to be done already. That's nice and simple. It's obviously one of the things where, where you put this together for the first time and you have to read the instructions for every little thing. The process is a bit slower than you could possibly do once you already know in your head exactly what needs to happen. So there we go, back together, nice and solid. No major dramas. What were we doing? <laughs> Power supply. So now we've got this. Obviously when you're turning into plastic parts, you want to be a little bit careful. It's very easy when you've got a big steel tool to just clamp it down and break everything, but be gentle. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so rigid, it's ridiculous. Awesome. Right. So more N6 by 12s, that's what we've done. Power supply cable should be coming out of the box at the bottom, should be rooted towards the Anzi box. Okay, well, it's sort of just dangling, so it just goes wherever it goes at the moment. 10 8 millimeter, eight centimeter piece from the black extrusion slot cover, route the cable to the back. 
use an 8 centimeter extrusion slot cover, hide the right Z motor cable in the, in the inside extrusion slot. What? Oh, in here, I see. So you've got this like short, it's, how easy is this stuff to cut? It looks quite soft, so presumably some simple side cutters will do fine. You want an eight centimeter piece, 18 millimeters, comes to about there. So route the cable under the rear extrusion and slot. So this cable coming down here. Oh, let's get this back down. See if we can towards this round a bit. Tuck this cable under here. Mm. Mm -mm. That looks pretty good. It's sort of popping out. I wonder if maybe a little bit too much tension on the. Uh, let's make sure it's really well in. Yep, I think that's good now. Doodly doodly do, root the cable. Fasten it in place with plastic extrusion slot cover. Huh? Okay, I'm just sort of following the pictures. I don't think we needed all of this. <laughs> I think I might move these into this little tray up here. So that those are nice and accessible. So it looks like we want one of these. This to go along here, and this to go on here. Like here. Excellent. Put the cable of the Y motor under the extrusion. So the Y motor is this long one. Fasten it in place with the plastic extrusion cover. So another one of those doohickeys. So we've got two wires in here. Noise. And I'm betting this is going to go in here with maybe some thing over the top, I'm not sure. Cut a 40 centimeter piece of the provided 6.4 millimeter Tacflex tube. There you go, knew it. <laughs> 40 centimeters of the 6.4. So we're going to need that slightly dodgy lighter again. Where's that gone? That's the one.
Oh no, that's not quite what I wanted to do. <laughs> Did want to mount the ends, didn't want to uh, splodge it on the desk. Cool. Yeah, electronics <laughs> takes a long time. I suppose we've only got 59 watching, to be honest. Normally we have a bit more, don't we? But yes, definitely hit that like button. Especially if you've been watching since the start. End thermistor taking all the wrapping off the extruder wire. Is that the older wrapping, the spiral wrap? Because that spiral wrap was an absolute nightmare. That stuff took ages to put on and off. This split tubing stuff normally is better, but I'm having a, <laughs> a bit of a mare with it today for some reason. So that will go across the back. I assume we need to, yes, bundle it up towards this end. So I'm going to stick a little thing in here and then wire this I must say quite impressed with this uh, wiring strategy compared to the uh, the poo shirts very tidy Add two more clips to here. So we want one just under this, just about here, and one over. Ah, oh, I don't have any more. Have I done two? One, two, three, four. This is. A, I don't have any more. I don't think. I mean, this looks like it would probably be enough, to be honest, but... Yep, 
I think that's the last one. I'm going to say put one down on the desk somewhere silly. So let's move this one over a little bit. It's not going quite right. Let's try again. Yeah, there's green stuff in here. So in here we have the cover for the top of that motor over there. And we have the idler for all this. Bontech gears, screws. More screws. And this tray, we have these parts. I don't think there is another That's it. Yeah, four. I guess it's just another instruction manual thing. I mean, four looks plenty enough to me, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh, look. <laughs> this picture is obviously more up to date than the last one, because this one has two clamps in this area, and this one just has one. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Oh, there's a hole here, is there? There is indeed. Well, that's pretty fancy, isn't it? Damn. I think we might want to uh, take this back a bit before we use up through here. I feel like that tech flex is maybe a little bit longer than we needed. Or maybe I've, I've probably just not pushed it back far enough this way. Oh no, it does stick up a little bit, so that's okay. Um, presumably we want these two wires to go up through this hole too. So let's poke these up through here. They do seem quite long, but I'm pretty sure they'll go to the right place. Cable route of the Y motor and the Z motor to, okay, so let's put these cable thingies on. Move this back down here for a second. So it looks like red, black, red, black. So, oh, did I do that? Damn, that one's a bit mangled. I think I must have bent it. There we go, all fixed. Um, That's the first red and then black, and then we've got the other red and then black.
I'm not going to push those anywhere yet. Uh, pay attention to the polarity. Wrong polarity may destroy the board. So yeah, red, black, red, black, red, black, red, black. Looks good. Red cable of the Y motor and the Z motor through the hole as well. Yep, did that. Extruder assembly. Top extruder, bomb tech extruder, mosquito hot end. Subsection. So this is going to go to the side for the moment. And we're going to scroll down to the subsection. Oh, well, we do need to do this as well. Oh, subsection for your hot end. Okay. This is the subsection for the E3D hot end. I'm not exactly sure. That's quite a standard box. Oh, did I not include the uh, full link? I thought I had. Maybe I was a bit lazy and typed it in. So we've got the uh, trusty old E3D V6 hot end here. So this looks like the standard. Has anyone else noticed that E3D parts seem to be impossible to get hold of? It's not just Hemera. It seems to be like half their shop is just out of stock. I've been trying to buy all sorts of like super volcano and stuff and that's just doesn't exist. Uh, we should follow the manual. Done these a few times, but it's obviously uh, better to always follow the guide because the first time you're bound to do something wrong. Well, even if you've done it a hundred times before, you still like to get it wrong if you don't follow the guide because that's just how <laughs> that's just how the world works. Screw the heat break into the other side and heat block that butts up against the nozzle. Done. Gripping the heat block with a spanner, tighten the nozzle with a second spanner. Do not over tighten, we are going to tighten it up later. Later. Got this new weirer tool we're going to have a little go with. So, which one? Did a little, I just noticed this actually yesterday evening. The uh, Normally, when you have like little socket sets that just go on, they just kind of sit there. But this has this bizarre locking mechanism, so the, the bits don't accidentally come off. Yeah, let's see if I can zoom you in. This is what you get with expensive tools, I guess. <laughs> like, so it doesn't, it doesn't release. You give it a little turn. Uh, which way? That way. It clicks, and then it just comes off. Click, and it's back in. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> Super excessive, but also kind of cool. So I'm not going to use too much force here, it's kind of, you don't really need to do much tightening here because it's not really the finished product as it is. Because we do have to do the hot tightening later, the thermal compound should spread evenly across the threads as the heat break only on cold side of the heat sink. So we've got this slightly gammy thermal compound, which is probably going to end up all over the place. Yeah. 
you really only need quite a small amount of it so do not over tighten insert the bottom coupling in the top Tink. Insert the provided PTFE tube, make sure it's fully inserted. For Bontech extruder only, measured from the metal to the tip of the tube, it should protrude about 6.5 millimeters. Uh, where is this said PTFE tube? Decar probe fan sensor USB cable. Am I being blind? PTP there. One. Oh no, that's just the seal on the bag. Not in there. That's more E3D thermistors, another pinder. Where should I be finding this PTFE tube? Does it come in the Bontec box by any chance? Oh, no. Ta da! Peter Fee Tube! Right, I won't send this too far away because I imagine we're going to need that in a minute. So, it uh, looks like I also need to cut this. Isn't it supposed to be, normally I would expect the end to be chamfered. Thirty nine millimeters length. Kind of difficult when it's all bendy. D is there any? Do you have like a tool? Oh. Oh. Thanks for your advice on the audio levels. I can I can boost it quite easily. Put an Allen key down it. That's quite a cool tip. Comes with some little Allen keys as well. That must be big. Thirty nine millimeters, yes. Oh, 
It was in the chat. 39 millimeters. Uh, seeing we're having some low audios, I'm just going to give it a quick, so I can boost, uh, I believe it's this button. So that should add another 10 decibels, I think. And uh, I think we're going to, it might be 15, so I'm going to counteract that with a, a little bit of reduction in here. Let me know if that audio is a little bit a little bit louder and a little bit easier to hear, maybe. I have a tendency when I'm filming to like shout a little bit louder, so I tend to have the volume quieter. But when I'm building, I talk at kind of much more normal levels. So that's why it tends to end up a little bit, a little bit quieter. Cool. Since you're assembling a V6 right now, have you ever encountered excessive heat creep on any of them before? Mm, no, I don't think so. Oh, this we were supposed to do some chamfery edges. But there's no, I don't think there's any way I'm going to manually... This is not fantastic, but it's... Cool. So we're going to also install the blue little collet clip. Ooh, that was <laughs> dried out. Yes, we could use the drill bit to do the top. Is that going to work? I don't think it's quite the right angle, really, but I also don't want to splay the edges. That's the, because it's. That's actually worked really, really well. <laughs> I'm going to go a little bit more with just a bigger bit. I'm not sure that's going to be super visible. No, I don't think you'll be able to see that, but hopefully you can sort of see what I was doing. It, you would have done if I had the camera in the right place. Okay, who's me happy with that now? Using an key, fasten the thermistor in place with the M2 screw. So, whoops, it is. So, making sure we're having it come out the right side. It looks like this side is the side that is desired. I'm going to stick a little grub screw in the bottom and tighten that in from here. Obviously, you can use standard tools for this, I'm just using it because it's available. So as always, don't want to over tighten that because it is tightening straight into the cartridge. So just gentle is sufficient so it doesn't come out. Did you see the 3D printed bedsheets, 3D printing benches on Twitter? I did see someone has created like a printer that's like enclosed in a bench sheet. That did look pretty cool actually. 
It looks like a project they were getting together for the virtual East Coast Rep Rap Festival. Did you see the three? Oh, yeah, I've just read that. There, that goes here. And so the heated cartridge with the leads exiting the block the same side as the thermistor. Center the cartridge in its hole in the block. Tighten the clumping portion of the heater around with M3 by 10. Complete assembled hot end. Oh, uh, what? This M3 screw looks like it's cracked. Yep, there's a crack in that screw. Don't want to put that one in. Luckily it comes with two. Let's use this one instead. God, that would have been a nightmare to have this screw crack in the flipping thing. Oh, that's not coming out. And then we've got this extension, which I'm not going to put on at the moment, I don't think, unless it's asking me to. I mean, it is attached, but I'm sure we can attach it later. Insert a pressure fit clip between the hot end and the collet. Done that. Bontech extruder preparation. So this will be my first ever Bontech, <laughs> look at a Bontech product. I've genuinely never owned a Bontech product. Well, I say never owned. I've never been sent one or really even looked at one close up. So this will be kind of cool for me as well as hopefully all of you too. Does look pretty sweet. So as far as I know, all of their products, they uh, 3D print. So these are all, they're not FDM, they use, I believe, SLS. So this is obviously based on the Prusa, well, the standard Prusa kind of ex in extruder design, but modified to be optimal for Bontech operation. Principally, the standard Bontech gears are designed to be used with a three to one gear reduction, and Prusa didn't do that in their original design. I'm not sure if they have, I, I don't think they still have. So, yeah. Not great for Bontech gears to be showcased in a non-optimal arrangement. So obviously they have products where you can replace the extruder, so you can use the Bontechs in the correct, uh, well, design scenario. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Inbuilt compressor limiter. Ah, oh, yes, of course there is. Uh, it's on the filters, isn't it? Limiter. Threshold. This says minus six, so we'll go with. So let's try that. So that's now set at minus six decibels for the limiter. We'll see how that goes in terms of volume. I'm, I'm shouting again. It's never gonna be normal if I keep shouting. I'm guessing the quality control thing with the screw is why they include two because like 
you don't need to, but if like 10% or something of their screws are damaged or even a small percentage, it's probably worth the cost for them to just put two in the box to give you twice the chance of having one that's good. Open the extruder body, the dowel pin of the idler will stick on one side of the parts. Exact side does not matter. Insert the small magnet into the lever. If it's sitting too close, you must use some glue to fasten it. Oh, sitting too loose, you use, use some glue. So, I've got some more parts here. So that looks like a fan bracket. This looks like a duct. This looks like a little ball thing. This looks like a magnet thing. And this looks like a top plate thing. A uh, quick question, uh, Wolfgang. The, all the parts that are included in here, is this all Bontech product or is this stuff that you add to this kit as well? It's all Bontech, okay. I was gonna say because the the print quality on the, they have some FDM printed parts in this kit and it's not quite as good quality as the uh, the standard Zaribo stuff. Obviously the SLS stuff looks magnificent. But for some reason they have some FDM parts. It seems a little bit odd to me, but there you go. How do you, Heidi, Heidi 3D Printing Viking. Heidi, Heidi, howdy, hello. English fails me today, I do apologize. <laughs> Some Bontech gears, gonna need those in a minute. Not sure where this magnet is. There's nothing in there. That's E3D screws, that's separate, that's just zip ties now. This is all just screws and another collet clip that's printed. Tensioner screw. Um. Separate little bag. So there's some magnets in here. I guess, yes. Yeah, so this would be the upgrade kit for a Prusa. In which case you would be dismantling the old Prusa kit. You'd extract the magnets that you have from that. So obviously here, Zobo. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Caribou. Uh, um, uh, including magnets with it separately. So we've got two little magnets here. We've got a, a slimmer one and a longer one. Now it's not mentioned, I'm guessing the orientation of the first one doesn't matter, only once there's both together. So there we have the magnet installed. I believe that's going to go in, no, what am I doing? Follow the instructions, Adam, stop being a twit. <laughs> uh, Insert the small magnet if it's sitting too loose, okay. An M3 by 16 screw. Which is one of these. There's still loads of screws left. <laughs> that's the wing that's worrying me about how much assembly time we still have to go. I say worrying, I'm not really worried, but. Nope. What the? Dickens, how's this supposed to go? There we go, that's got it. Does this just screw in? Looks like it. Well, this is slightly bizarre. It looks like it's just supposed to kind of self tap into the plastic. So I'm going to need to give it a little bit more force. So 
It's also going to be easier with a driver instead. Oh, we've got a group of people joining. Yep, that looks suitably wibbly wobbly. Remove the small screw cover in the lower part of the extruded body. Oh, no, how on? Oh, I'm skipping a step. Is it the big mirror in the slot next to the lever? Make sure the magnet repel each other. Nope. I'm happy they've put a slot in the back so you can poke the magnet out. There we go. Oh, how far? Goes a long way down. It's a bit jumpy. <laughs> cool, that's in. Move the small screw cover in the lower part of the extruder body. Small screw cover. I've really no idea what it's talking about. Screw, small screw cover. Ah, oh, Chris Riley's stream is finishing. That's where the rest of the people were. Not needed for 10 millimeter. Is that an M3 hex nut? We'll use that later to secure the nylon filament. Oh, is it? Oh, it's here. Okay. Oh yes, the M3 by 16 should have been from this bag. Yes, I see what you mean, Martin, yeah. Correct, although, I mean, the screws are the same, so they look largely the same anyway, but you're right. So that's now in there. What I'm going to do very briefly is just try and pull this nut towards the back. Yep, mine is moving really freely. Definitely looks like plenty of wiggle room. I did one of these for the Mark 3S upgrade, so Hopefully I'm repeating what I did there because that one seems to be working nicely. Align the gear with the hinge as shown. Carefully press the shaft in place. So we need to remove this doobly do. We've got this doobly do. Open this little baggie. Pair of Bontek gears. If you've not purchased the Bondate gears before, you might be surprised at quite how expensive they are. They are, for the genuine ones, rather pricey. Uh, that sort of goes for most of the Bontech stuff, to be honest. Hmm. I should be more careful here.
Yeah, my to be fair, uh, from what Gus is just saying there, my um, my original sensor from from Prusa that the like the one that's basically like a mouse sensor that can actually see the surface moving. I never had an issue with that. I was one of the lucky ones, but obviously they changed everything, so I felt it was only sensible for me to change over mine as well. Uh, install the hinge using the 3 by 32 mm shaft, which is this that I just took out. I'm not sure if this is supposed to press in more. I guess not, it's supposed to be kind of loose, isn't it, so that it can uh, scooch in and out nice and easily. Uh, remove the shaft with the black plastic gear. Slide this onto the end in this fashion. For some reason, using the Allen key that came with E3D V6. <laughs> Fasten the glove through by a few rotations so that they cannot rotate but can move back and forth. That sounds like what the intention is. So let's get that back in there. Noise. Insert the shaft assembly into the back of the extruder body. Oh, okay. Do as I'm told, not as I think I should be doing. <laughs> this goes into here now. Make sure the grooves are aligned with the filament path and fasten the grub screw. Well, that looks kind of aligned, actually, so... It looks like it's going to press up against the bearing, so it should like it... Looks like it would kind of self-align, almost. Installed a thumb screw. Pat 9125 even detect this pink, which is always a tricky one. Yeah, mm, mm, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong. Am I not supposed to be putting it back together yet? I know, of course, we need the hot end in there. Oh, and I've just, the bearings just come out. That doesn't seem like that's supposed to happen. Oh, it's just a loose press fit into a plastic part anyway. That's absolutely fine. That's rubbish, don't need that. Oh, good idea. Yes, because I'm. I wonder if I put it further up and then it's more uniform distance from my mouth. Maybe that's going to be a bit better. I need to put another square nut inside. In the side here. Also one for the pin there, and I should probably just read this and I'll... Ah, uh, yeah, that's, that's done now. Uh, add the small piece of tape on the inner ring, this is so the hot end cannot rotate. 
And what? A small piece of tape on the inner ring. What sort of tape are we after here? Um, is there tape included? Is that something that's supposed to be here? <laughs> no, still no first print. We're still quite a long way off, I think. We're working on the extruder at the moment. I'm not sure if we'll even make it today, to be honest. Not included. Well, let's try this tape. This, it's going to be quite thin, this, but... And getting it to be the right shape and size is not going to be easy. Ah, uh, yeah, got it. Yeah, I see. So this wants to be... Where's my E3D hot end? Too wide, darn it. <laughs> there we go. Small piece of tape installed. I'm wondering. I'm going to go a couple of pieces of tape because this tape is very thin compared to most others, I believe. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Two pieces of tape or just the one? Yeah, there are square nuts. Still to do. So we've got, I did that one, I need to do this one here. I swear that one was already installed. And this one, that one we've done in here. I don't think there's going to be anything up there. And then the Pinder one. Well, I'll have to try and fix the mic somewhere else in the next stream, but for now, we've been getting on kind of okay as it is, so I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, usually insulating tape is thicker, so I'm going to go for two pieces of this because it's quite thin tape. Uh, before we install it. Yep, so we've got both of the parts in there. Touch the front. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, so... Cable's coming out the opposite to the screw, that's right. I 
I've never understood why E3D don't have a flat side on this thing somewhere. Like you just add one flat side somewhere in the mount or on the heatsink or somewhere, and that would just prevent this whole problem with its rotation, which just seems to be a ubiquitous issue. Oh, that's just falling out. What I'm going to do, hmm, maybe not. Hmm. This goddamn nut keeps falling out. So this is kind of difficult to put back together. <laughs> it's just all these bearings and stuff all need to align just so. There's a massive freaking screw head here. What the hell? How the dickens is that supposed to go together? Oh, there's a hole for it. This is bizarre. Oh, there we go. Whew. Should be better. Made <laughs> a rectangle and called it Voskita. <laughs> They could do that, but then it would also be like three times the price. Uh, attach the front onto the rear, push the hot end upwards to align the neck correctly. Ensure everything is aligned and carefully cut the parts together. Important, the parts should fit together easy. Do not use any excessive force. Yeah, I don't think I use excessive force. Insert one square knot on the back of the extruder at the position within the circle. Yeah, done that. That's the Pinder Pro. I haven't used any screws. Mosquito hot end insulation. It's flu fans and printer probe. Do I not have to screw this together? There doesn't seem to be any screwing together. That seems strange to me. Attach the motor cable to the extruder motor. Do we use the Bontech extruder motor cable or is there a different one? Yes. Touch the motor cable to the extruder motor. Really came through the slot of the extruder body. That's the one on this side. How come these are all done upside down? That's <laughs> all the images are upside down, aren't they? 
<laughs> for me, it would seem logical to have the hot end pointing downwards. Uh, fan. The fan was in this box. I remember seeing that before. Uh, yeah, sorry about the Streamlabs, he can get a bit happy. The time's up for one second. What an odd administrative decision. Use four M3 by 16 countersunk screws to fasten countersunk screws. There's no countersink in the motor though. Well, there's only three of those. There's no M3VS16s in this bag. Surely we don't really need to use countersunk screws for this. This seems bizarre to me. Yeah, that's your screws, but the M3x16 countersunk labelled as flathead only has three screws in it. I don't think I've used an M3x16 countersunk screw in the wrong place, have I? Where else have I used countersunk screws? Was there one in a modified part of the assembly? Head cap screws will touch lead screw. Ah, well we don't want that, do we? Okay, well it looks like we'll use the countersunk ones, but we do have fewer as a result. Was there a modified part earlier in the assembly where we used a countersunk screw? I'd just be concerned about mashing the, uh, separating everything on the fan. Just go with three, I have something I can have one. Cool, three for now, and <laughs> the fourth shall be added at a later date, if required. Use a solar fan to the extruder body as shown. Yeah, fasten the fan. Use a countersink screw to ensure a perfect fit of the screw. Okay. Insert the M3 hex nut into the holder for the radial fan. So that's this and this. 
Uh, no, that's not this. Okay, we're going to use ones from here. Was there a reason why it's only two? Because there's space for three. What's the third one? Maybe this one goes in here. No, it doesn't. That's for a bigger thing. Attach the holder to the extruder front, secure it with the M3 by 10 screw. It's confusing whether to know that, whether to be using the Brontek ones or the other ones. Oh, this is the alignment thing. Okie dokie. It's not a... I see now. Ninety-three views and only thirty-six likes. Come on, guys! I know you can do better than that. Hit like. I feel like I'd be doing more like self-promotion in these streams. I just never really do. Yeah. So like the stream if you're enjoying it. Yay! <laughs> I mean, if you want to, do. If you don't want to, I'm not going to cry about it. <laughs> Are we going to have a print today? Uh, at the moment, it feels like probably not. I feel like I've got quite a lot still to do, and it's 9 p.m. We've been going an hour and a half, and we've mostly just done this, this, and the extruder. <laughs> I build at a quite a slow pace, it appears. Touch the radial fan, N3 by 20 screws. I'm testing the manual, that's what I'm doing. Stress testing the manual. Reading and following every single detail. Smash that like button. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, it's funny seeing some people like get super enthusiastic about the like the call to action things. Yeah, I do it a bit, but like let's be real here. British people don't really get super enthusiastic about anything. <laughs> I suppose British people are enthusiastic about queuing. Mm, that's about it. <laughs> and we've got thumbs down zero. There was, a, there was a one thumbs down on this video three hours before it started. <laughs> Someone's already decided, no, I don't like this. This content is not for me. <laughs> Insert the pin probe into the hole, closest to the holder, to the radial fan, secure it with M3 by 12 screw. Pin probe. What did I do with that? Right here. Do we still call it a pin probe when it's not from Prussia? I believe it's just an inductive probe, right? Uh, I believe we don't need all these screw things on it, so these can all come off. And we'll put those in that little compartment there. 83, 42. 44 likes, doing pretty good. There's two pinder holes. I guess, uh, what? Uh, What is this voodoo? Okay, I think it's this one. Nope, not doing that properly. This screw is not long enough. M3 by 12. 
think I'm going to decide that this is not a long enough screw and we need a longer one. Yep, M3 by 12 does not fit. I'm going to use an M3 by 14 because I think that might fit a little bit better. And 3 by 14 it is. <laughs> that was Joe <Jobber. laughs> No, Joe wouldn't bother. Like, <laughs> what I do is fairly irrelevant, I think. Uh, what am I just doing? I'm just doing random things. Make sure the tip of the pin is set below the nozzle. We adjust the correct position later. Of course, yes, because we don't want it to all crash into the bed. That would be really disastrous. Just in case, eh? We'll give us plenty of room. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Excellent. Installation of the filament sensor. So we're going back up to here now with this thing. And we need a ball with the little metal balls. So we've got the actual sensor itself and a little steel ball. Insert the seven meter ball into the ball holder. Set the extruder upright. Screw in the thumb screw, hand tight. Get some like that. I've no idea how. That seems a lot of tension on that. Whoop, lost the bolt. <laughs> oh, okay. Six extrude it upright. Screw in the thumb screw hand tight, listen by three foot foot. Insert the housing into the top of the extruder. Push it into the hole gently. Um that's just jammed. Yeah, that's not going in. I think we might have to do a little bit of... Still not even close. Justin Taylor, welcome. You just missed 90 minutes of the stream. <laughs> Does that really make a significant difference? It 
sehen. So let's just give it a quick test. Oh, that's not, there's like a little bit of filament in there. I don't understand why Bontek have FDM printed some of their parts. Should be a bit better. Yep, that looks good. Hello, la, 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 la. Insert the housing into the top of the extruder, push it gently. Here's the hole, insert the filament sensor, fasten it with one by M2 by eight millimeter screw. So what does that come for? Aha. It's right here. Nope, not that one. Tiny little one. So obviously you want to be very difficult, very difficult, very careful when handling the filament sensor. A small sensitive device. Cool, that looks nice and secure. And on to the next part, screw the cover with one M3 by 10. So is there a, like a green cover? I'm pretty sure I saw it. Can we use the green cover or is that, do we need to use the Bontech cover? There's this one and there's this one. They are slightly different actually. This one looks like it fits, so we'll go with this one. Although this one maybe would fit also the same, but... Which one do we use? Do we go with the black Bontech for the original Prusa or this one? I'm assuming the modified one. Let's go with the green one. Have that little green flash. I'm sure, given its position, we'll be able to change it later. Yeah, it's a, it is a very upgraded Prusa i3 style printer. A lot of it's based on Prusa. The, the firmware is based on the Prusa firmware, which is obviously Marlin firmware. Black works with Prusa only. That's what I thought. Goodbye, black piece. Insert seven M3 by M seven M3 hex nuts into the back of the X carriage. Right, we need the X carriage. That looks like this piece. 
We've got some little stringy bits on this as well, so let's get these sorted. Looks like we might need to drill on this piece as well, actually. Yeah, I'm going to get the drill out and clear these holes. They don't look like completely blocked, I could probably force a screw in, but it's nice to just to get it nice and tidy, so. And do, 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 three millimeter screw, drill rather. It's a standard E3D V6 hot end. This is this ABS or ASA or something. Seems like it's a different material compared to the other parts. Green Tech Pro Black. Just got some of that filament actually, which I purchased myself. No promotion required. Not used it yet, but got some to try. You'd smell it whilst drilling. No, I mean, I would if I was drilling really fast, but that was slow. It was more of a cutting. It's not going to cause a smell. Due to housing SLS printed parts in polyamide. Yeah, 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 that's the SLS. I was meaning this, this part, which is a FDM part. Why are these pictures all continue to be upside down? <laughs> this is so confusing. Uh, oh, we need to add the nuts in, don't we? All we did was drill the holes. Nope. Does the ordered caribou actually come completely finished? Well, I believe there is a pre assembled, right? There are pre-assembled versions, I think, of this. But this is obviously the kit version. Well, even if it did make a smell, I wouldn't have been able to smell it anyway, because I can't really smell anything, so. The answer is no, I couldn't smell it.
What do you think about the CTC A13 3D printer? Well, I've never heard of it and never used it, so not a lot. Don't forget to drink something. Good point. <laughs> it's not so bad today. I've not felt quite so hot. Maybe I get really warm. It's just because of these huge, like, bright lights. I also used to have a really good sense of smell, and now I don't, which sucks. <laughs> a good nose is always useful for cooking, because it means you don't have to put timers on for anything. You just smell as soon as it's ready, because you know what the right thing smells like. But as soon as you can't smell anything, everything just starts to burn, because you have no idea how, how done it is. Especially when that's how you've cooked your entire life. Anyway. Uh, okay, have we done those seven knots? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, that took a little while, didn't it? This is the correct orientation of the X carriage with the cable on each side through the slot of the carriage. Man. It doesn't help the, the colour as well, actually. We can't really do a whole lot about, to be fair. Uh, oh, I can't zoom between stages. The bright lights just make it really difficult because it's a really cheap screen, so the contrast is really bad, and then you add the bright lights, and suddenly anything that's slightly dark is all looks the same. <laughs> the whole thing's upside down. I don't understand why all these instructions are upside down. All the pictures, rather. <laughs> but we're getting there. Right, that's in about the right place. M3 by 10 screw in the lower right hole on the photo. Why have I got a screw on here? Oh, I was using it to tighten everything in, wasn't I? Uh, not sure what length it is, it's going to go there. That's not going well. Looks like one of these wires is maybe a little bit trapped, so we've got to be very careful with that. A little bit more careful, I think. about right. Turn that in. It 
Sorry, Justin, can't really help you, man. I don't know anything of that, that machine. Uh, fasten the X-carriage to the Buntec with M3 by 40 screw in the lower left hole. So, There we go. <laughs> Tolerances on these holes are just like a smidgen too tight. Okay, well, it is mandatory. Yep, I shall cable management when instructions tell me to cable management. Fasten the X carriage to the Bontek extruder with M3 by 30 screw and the middle right hole on the photo. Middle right, there's like two middle, oh, that middle right. Yeah, like a little red circle or something would be really useful to just to double clarify exactly which hole is intended. Um, M3 by 35, M3 by 30. Uh, I would like to first print, but honestly, at this point, probably not. It'll be, I'll be doing like another half an hour or an hour maximum, and then that'll probably be it. This is going in a remarkably long way. There we go. <sighs> so many screws. Right. For the installation of the stock extruder, please prepare. Okay, we're not stock, we're Bontec. I'm just going to have a quick tidy up some of this stuff on the desk because I don't think I'm going to need a lot of these now. These are all empty little bags. Empty bag, empty bag, empty, empty bag, empty bag, stick a random screw, empty box, empty bag, empty box, box, bag, 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 box, bag. Right. I haven't put this on yet. Did I miss that? Hopefully not. It shouldn't be too difficult to add on at the end anyway, so I'm not too fast. I mean, I'm not sure what other steps there are to do. But yeah, I'm feeling like next Sunday will probably be, this is an old Prusa bed, by the way, don't take much notice of this. Uh, move the X axis to the upper third of the Z axis to get some workspace. Upper third, that looks about right. Place the bearings roughly as seen on the photo. Attach the assembled extruder to the bearings. Make sure the slide, to slide, make sure the slide into the holes, the X, okay, that's confusing, but I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, so, uh, 
So heater goes under, these two go through the middle, plop, this goes onto here. And as if by magic, everything is kind of in place. But we don't have any screws prepared. Use four M3 by 18 screws. One, two, three. On this part of the instructions, my tip might be to make sure we get everything out and then move this thing up to here. Because once you're holding it in place, you can't really do a lot. Uh, I think I just moved the parts out of the way that I now need. Looks like this piece and this piece. And I'm actually going to drill these out as well because they're going to be the same material. So probably have some slightly closed holes. Ah, M3 by 22, okay. Thank you for all the tip. Two, three, four. No, these ones are actually not so bad. It's... These ones are probably actually fine. Yep. Didn't think I needed to do those, but they've been done. Probably should have got that drill out earlier and just left it aside. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is try and flip this all around so you can see the back as I'm putting it all together. Oh my goodness, that's heavy! <laughs> <sighs> right. So let's get this in the right place so we can all see what's going on. And 3 by 22 I've seen you build from the type that from the start, but this is the first time live. Well, welcome to the live streams. Glad you could join us. Has been quite a popular stream to watch after the fact, actually, strangely enough. It keeps, on my personal YouTube account, it keeps rec being recommended to me. So obviously, uh, YouTube is enjoying people watching it, which is always, I don't know what parts I'm supposed to be using here. Pay attention, Evan, what are you doing? Uh, this looks like the right part. Oh, but it's so tiny, I can't see what's going on. This looks like it should go this way around. Yes, that looks much neater. Gently screw them in and don't over tighten. Make sure the extruder can run freely and without too much excess resistance on the X rods. Hmm. Might have overdone that maybe. Not sure quite what it felt like before, to be honest. There is a quite a lot of grease in, so. Seems sensible. Route the cables through the slots on the... Do you use a lot max SC10 sometimes? Uh, no, I mean, honestly, 
with the amount of printers I have around at the moment and the very limited space, most of the printers that I've assembled recently I've just not touched after the fact because I've got nowhere to put them to print with them. I have very limited space and yeah, I mean, obviously because I had this stuff here for a few weeks, this is space where like two printers could normally be, but can't. <laughs> Thanks, Gus. <laughs> That's good. It's good as actually, I mean, I've always had issues with getting cameras right. I always end up doing something and then think, oh, where does the camera need to point? Whereas, yeah, with so many cameras all over the place, it's difficult to miss everything. Uh, so we need this. This, the quadrant screen. Presumably for a lot of people this can be quite a complex build. I suppose I've had some help along the way. <laughs> Helps doing it on the live stream with both of you here. I mean, I was never told to plug that in, but I've done it now. Uh, let's get these going nice and tidily in the right order. Black, white, red. I feel like I'm not doing this quite right. It was sort of sitting in, but not really staying. They just sort of pop out the top. Oops, so there's it. <laughs> hmm. I suppose once it's managed, it should stay there. I've not noticed any buffering on my preview, so I don't know if that's your end, but nobody's mentioned it. Uh, route of the cables through the bottom part, leave out the filament sensor cable for now. Leave out the filament sensor cable. So that one goes off to the side, and that red just disappears. Uh, heaters and stuff, obviously those don't go through this, but everything else goes through this. Uh, and this is going to go through this way. Oh man, I'm going to re remove some of this lubricant that's come out of the bearings because it's getting all over everything. There was never any instruction to add this little um, wire guide, I don't think, for this fan either. Uh, I'm kind of doing it from memory, from building the pressure, to be honest.
Which slot were we going in this one? Let's get that in there. And this one too. Seven hours. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of hours. <laughs> but in fairness, this is live stream build time. So live stream builds always take longer than just like non live stream builds. So I wouldn't be too intimidated by it for anyone concerned about that. Got that through. Grease all over the cables. Right, I'm going to manage this one separately in a second. Cool, and that looks like it's all about right. What is the build like compared to a Prusa? Well, that's a significant query. I really want to screw this in. Can I screw it in with something, please? And three by 18, there's probably going to be 22s again, isn't it? Right. Arr. This lubricant just goes everywhere. What's the build like compared to a Prusa? I'd say the Prusa instructions are a little bit clearer. Obviously, Zaribo is going through some changes and updates, so that makes the instructions a little bit less obvious. But that's not to say they're bad. There are definitely way worse instructions out there. Uh, this one feels like it's longer than the Prusa, but I don't really know, I can't really remember. I mean, they're quite similar in terms of the actual build process itself. It is quite similar. If you can build a Prusa, I suggest you could build this. So, in that regard, quite similar. The parts are obviously quite different. These ones are a little bit more rigid. The quality of them, of the quality of the like, of the shelf items, is a little bit better. Quite a lot better in some cases. But yeah, the the assembly process, I would say, is somewhat similar. How the dickens am I meant to do this? Eh? See the bottom part, leave out the filament sensor cable for now. Okay, I'm going to have to zoom in on these pictures. So that's going out there and then back in there. And then back in and down. Okay, blowy me. Okay, okay. Right, 
To be clear, the instructions didn't tell me to put this screw in, I just put it in because I wanted to rest my hands for a minute. So this is going to go this way in here, pull all the way through. And somehow we've got to get it back through this hole. This doesn't seem like it's going to be very easy. Uh, how on earth are we going to get that through there? Right, tight squeeze, but we've made it. Okie dokie. Right, let's get this screw back in so we can use the other hand. Right, I think we've got that all tucked in nicely. I think this, the little tabs that are holding the cables in on this part here could probably come a little bit further across. There doesn't seem to be quite enough space to hold the cables in all the time. Uh, right, that was mildly complicated. Uh, slide the filament sensor cable through the hole. Prepare the provided nylon filament and tech flex according to the table with respect to the model you are building. So we're doing 320. So we need 57 centimeters of nylon ooh, and 55 centimeters of 12.7 tube. So this is the half inch tube. This is the nylon. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Fifty-seven centimeters. So it's what sixty-seven comes that's seventy. So what do we want? Fifty-seven. Just a little bit. There we go. Marked with the old thumb, so hopefully we can just use a scissors. This might be much easier.
This is the unfortunate thing about this Techflex tube, the need to melt these ends. It's not particularly a uh, refined process, is it? Maybe it's just me being not very good at it, but... Uh, do you want to... No, we can see fine. I mean, as you can see, there are parts of it even catching fire. <laughs> Which is probably not desirable. Right. Hopefully that won't fray now though. Let's put that somewhere safe-ish. Heated blade. That would be fantastic if that sort of thing was easy to just have at home on a tiny desk. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean though. Industrially, I'm sure they don't sit there with a lighter and just <laughs> burn the ends. Uh, insert the sharpened side of the nylon, uh, right, mm, nylon filament. That's the other thing we need to do. This should be easier. So we're going to use the sharpened end. Check the IR sensor cables, back view, left to right, should be red, white, black. Nope. Back view, left to right, is black, white, red. <laughs> I have black closest to the extruder um, arm, extruder tensioner arm, white closest to the middle, and red closest to this side. So that sounds like they're the wrong way around. Did I just put the connector in the wrong way up? Ignore that. <laughs> okay, okay. Consider that ignored. Nylon. Oh, I did nylon. Oh, uh, did the TechFlex fifty-seven and the night. Okay. My tech flex is two centimeters too long. Should I, I should probably cut this down because otherwise it's going to be difficult. Tech flex 12.7, 55 centimeters. There we go, two centimeters less now. So 57 centimeters of the nylon, keeping this pointed end if we can. I'm going to point this down and then point it back up again in a minute, hopefully, if I remember. Should have done that already. Nylon, 320, 57 centimeters. Red is ground, black is 5 volts. That does seem a little bit backwards, doesn't it? OK, 
can you please make can you please show the end of the IR sensor going to the INZ? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Looks like so. Yeah, so that's the connector side. Hope you can see that clearly. Open one side of the nylon filament with a sharp knife. So we've got this kind of mildly sharp end. I don't know how. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it very sharp, to be honest. Seems like it should be good enough. Insert the sharpened side of the nylon filament into the left hole in the center of the X carriage. Huh? The left hole in the center of the X carriage. Oh, we didn't put the other. Excuse me, we still not fixed this thing on. Or maybe we weren't supposed to have done that. Two M3 by 18. So I've used M3 by 22. I'm not sure what it means by hole on the left. The only hole I can see is this one. Seems kind of loose. Is it supposed to be one in here? Yes, it's in here. <laughs> sure if you keep up. No, I didn't. The, the overall length is still fine. It's okay. Uh, Skip the nylon filament by inserting one M3 by 10 screw. Not sure how this secures the filament, but I'll take your word for it. I'm guessing does that okay? Feels kind of secure. Fasten the X cable holder with one M3 by 35 millimeter screw. So we're coming up towards the end of the stream now. So if anyone has any questions they want to ask before it's over, now is probably a reasonably good time to do that. Uh, and I can't see this cable holdery thing. I definitely have it because I know I've seen it. So I'm not worried, I just need to find it. Yeah, well this is strange. <laughs> I wasn't worried and now there may be some cause for concern. What have I done with it? Everything was on this table. Aha! So yes, don't forget to like the stream if you've been watching along, watching along, watching the stream, if you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe if you want to see more from me. We're of course not going to be finishing this today, unfortunately. So you'll have to come back again for another live stream next week. So we do these on Sunday. Had a special live stream on Friday as well this week. 
but that won't be a common thing. And then normal content goes up on Wednesdays. I'm struggling to finish the video this week, so that may we may actually have a video. We may not have a video this week, which is kind of sad, but sometimes that's just the way it is. And that is not long enough. So yes, don't forget to subscribe if you would like to. I don't know how long it is actually to the end of this section, so we might just abruptly finish or get to the end of the segment. I'm not too sure. But I think I might have forgotten to put in a nut somewhere because this is not screwing into anything. I'm certain I put in all those nuts. This is just going all the way in. Oh dear. If you want to dear me what the correct orientation should be, it sounds like there's some confusion over what the correct one is. I'm happy to change it over, of course. Uh, I might also try and adjust this between this stream and the next one, because clearly I've made a mess of that somewhere. That screw should be going into a, uh, a nut by the looks of it, but I seem to have missed one, which is bizarre, because I'm very sure that I put them all in. Wonderful, thanks 3D Gusner or Gusner, whatever. <laughs> so we're kind of in the middle of stages, so apologies for that. But we're at about two and a half hours, so I think that's a reasonably good place for me to stop. About 10 p.m. now. Uh, I'm pretty tired and I obviously don't want to make a mess of this. So what I did in a kind of work in progress state, this will be a good point still for us to pick up next week. Uh, I'll probably do some corrections. I'm not planning on doing any building during, like, between streams. But I do want to try and fix this, make sure this INZ uh, filament sensor is the correct way around. I might have just put it in upside down, you know. But it's it, it looked like that was the locked in direction, so... But maybe it's just supposed to be the other way up. Oh no, yeah, that looks like it fits way better. Yeah, I think I just had it the wrong way up. Anyway, that's going to be it for me now. I'll sort that out later. And the screw on the back. Stopwatch down. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you Martin for letting me use the printer. Thank you for Wolfgang for sticking around and answering questions. And of course for Gastner for admin, uh, moderating the, uh, the chat as well. It's lots of help. Great to have you all around. All right, people are all disappearing. So obviously we've got to the end. Thank you very much everyone. And I shall see you in the next one or next week, next Sunday or Wednesday for the video. Either way, I'll see you soon.